What is going on everyone? My name is Benjamin Nowak and welcome back to the bait making channel. Now this video is a follow up to our bladed jig fire craw video. Now if you guys don't know about the fire craw bladed jig, it's a great springtime bait. It's a bait that's really good in dirty water, good around shallow water cover, and pretty hard to get your hands on. So in the last video we made a custom homemade bladed jig in that fire craw color with that poison tail swing mold. But today's video we're going to be making a trailer for this bait. Kind of some unique options for a trailer that maybe you guys haven't fished before, haven't thought of before, maybe haven't even heard of. I didn't hear of these baits, or not this one, until I went to the Do It Molds factory a couple months ago and Brennan and Drake were showing me this thing. Now this is the Do It Molds 5 inch fat fork. What makes this bait so good, and you can see it as I'm just holding it right here, is that it has a lot of natural action. The bait isn't going to have a lot of action by itself, it won't naturally have a tail kick but when you put it behind a bladed jig, this tail is going to do exactly what that blade does. So it's going to have a really good shake and shimmy in the water. It's going to look great on the back of a bladed jig. And what I like the most is it has a big fat head on it. So what that's going to do, it's going to cause your vibrating jig to have a fatter head on it. It's going to flare that skirt out. It's going to give it a little bit bigger profile with this on the back. The other is your three and a half inch swim shad. This is a bait that's a little bit unique. You can tell by that tail that it's a little bit different, right? You have your three chicken foot sort of tail on there, so it's gonna swim at really slow speeds, but it's also gonna have a really unique action and sort of a more erratic action in the water than that fat fork. So these are the baits we're gonna be making in today's video. I'm gonna show you guys how to make these colors so they pair up perfectly on the back of your fire craw bladed jig. We're gonna have some fun with this one. So when you get a close up of this bait, this is our bladed jig that we made in the last video. Our goal is to really try to come up with a color that complements and somewhat matches the skirt that we use. So we're looking for a red with some black, an orange with maybe a little black or gold flake, and that's going to be really the goal of our bait. So when you take a closer look at the baits that I've made previously, you have that red back with the black flake, and then you have an orange fluorescent orange belly with a little bit of gold hollow flake. So I'm going to show you guys all the components that I'm going to use to make this trailer right here. The first thing you're gonna need are the molds. This is your three and a half inch swim shad mold. I always mark my molds top and bottom. So when I do my dual injection, I'll have that ready. And then your five inch fat fork again, top and bottom. So I'm ready to go with that. Now, as we get into the colorants, we're gonna start from the top down. The colorant you're gonna need is your red X2 colorant. This is my preferred colorant on the market and then some black 0 .040 flake. That 0 .040 is the biggest flake they have, um, and that is what I'm gonna go with in the top. I really want it to stand out. It's more of an accent than it is anything else. And then on the bottom, we're gonna use fluorescent orange, and then this is the secret, that gold hollow flake, 0 .015. This is a really small flake, but the reason I like this is because it's really going to kind of accent and flash and shine in that bottom color. If you look at that bladed jig we made, that middle color is your orange with gold scale. So this is gonna complement that, it's gonna stand out and it's also gonna have a little bit more flash. So those are the colors and that's what we're gonna be using as well as a dual injector. And that's how we're going to make our trailers for this bladed jig. You guys may or may not be able to tell I changed my setup around a little bit, but we have our two measuring cups and we have our crystal clear plastisol. This is what I have, you can use the Essential Series, um, but crystal clear from Do It is the plastisol that I have. We're gonna start by shaking it up and then just pour a cup of plastic into each of our measuring cups. After we do that, we're gonna take these right over here and stick them into our microwave for about four minutes. So that's gonna get our plastisol pretty close to that magic 350 degree number. And that'll get us going. They're not quite there. They're probably at about 300, 320. But I'm gonna to start to add my colorants and then I'll get them up to temperature. So the first one we're gonna do is this orange. This is your bottom color. I'm gonna start by shaking my colorant and I want it to be pretty solid. I don't want this bait to have much translucence, so I'm not going to really count the drops that I use, but that orange is going to fill it out pretty well. Because this is a color for dark water, I'm going to want that bait to be pretty solid. I don't want this to be super translucent, so I'm not going to be super 
careful with the number of drops that I use. And you can check it on the knife. It's going to be a very good representation of what it's going to look like. And you can tell it's still very translucent. So we're just going to keep adding until I get it to the color and opacity, I guess, or opaqueness that I want it to be. It's still probably not quite there. You can still see through it really well. But I wonder when I add that flake how close I'm going to get. So I'm going to take now and with this small flake you don't want to dump it in because you're going to end up with a mess. So I'm going to use about a quarter of a teaspoon and then I'm going to mix and see what that looks like. This is really just to give that bait some flash in the water. And like I said, see how much thicker it makes that color look? It makes it look a lot darker than it was. I might add a little bit more, kind of make it stand out a little more, but I don't know how necessary it is. And that's sort of what our orange is going to look like. The red, just like that orange, I want it to be dark. I don't want it to be see-through. So I'm going to add a decent bit. I didn't count the drops. Um, to be honest, I added quite a lot of red. But we might have to heat this plastic up. Get it a little more liquid. Okay, let's give this thing another go. Now it's much more liquefied again. So as I mix that red in, this red definitely gets a lot darker much more quickly than that orange seemed to so i might not have to add any more red to this but you can tell that's that's going to be a pretty thick dark red color already and then by the time we add our black whoa <laughs> by the time we add that black she's gonna be pretty solid Black's always one of those colors I fear, right? I, I'm worried I'm going to add too much, but you almost, within reason, can't add too much black flake. It's just going to darken the bait up, and the black really carries throughout pretty well without making the bait look too ridiculous. But with those other colors, with like accent colors, I feel like you can add way too much, especially on the back of a dark bait like this red. I think that's going to look pretty good. So that's what it's going to look like. Can't take any out. Probably should have been a little bit more careful, but... By the time you dual inject with that orange, I don't think there's going to be too much black flake. I think we should be fine. Be kind of careful. Uh, you can't add less. This goes for colorant. This goes for glitters. This goes with pretty much everything you do with bait making. You can't take it away. So be a lot more careful than I was. We're going to toss this in. We're going to put it in there probably for about a minute, minute and a half, and then it'll get it up to that 350 where we can shoot it into our molds. While we're waiting on that, I'm going to clamp these molds. I'm going to go with the fat fork on the left and then i'm going to go with the swim shad on the right now the key here is i want the top on the same side so for example the fat fork the top is on the left with the swim shad the top's going to be on the left as well so i'm actually going to clamp them backwards like this it's also going to allow me to clamp them in a way that's going to hold the swim shad mold closed but also hold the fat fork closed so Sort of unorthodox, but we're going to clamp it just like that. And that's going to clamp both of those molds closed correctly. If you don't clamp your molds, you're going to get flashing. It's going to cause a lot of issues with your baits. So be sure that you have some nice clamps like these here um, to keep those molds tight. Another thing throughout this process is you don't want to burn your plastic. And you want both colors when you're dual injecting to be at the same temperature. So heat in small increments until you know how long you have to heat for. I'm right at that 350 mark. So I'm gonna pull these out and I'm gonna get my dual injector ready. In my iCraw video, I didn't use this bar on my dual injector, but there's a reason that this is in here. I'm gonna pour the plastic into the injector itself down the tubes, each color and the individual side. I'm gonna add the tops on. Once I push those tops in, my mixing block is going to go on the top. It's going to sit down here. I'm going to tighten this nut. You'll see me in this process. And that's going to allow me to dual inject a lot more sturdily. I'm not going to be trying to, to fumble with the blending block. So that's actually why they gave me this pole here. I don't know if you guys have watched all my videos. I didn't use this rod before. But it is a necessity when you're using 
a dual injector or the dual injector from dual molds at least. So I'm going to pour it in. It's a lot easier than in drawing this up. This is a tip I learned from Brennan over at Do It. Keep track of which side the red's in and which side the orange is in. Right now red's on the left. Orange is in my right hand because one of these is bottom color. One of these is top color. And be sure to wear your heat resistant gloves. If you don't, you're going to wish you did. This is going to burn your hands really bad. Okay, so now that the colors are in, I'm going to add my nozzle. And you're going to take your blending block and place it on your nozzle injectors. Turn this like one time. Top's here, bottom's here. So you're going to match it with your mold top and bottom color. Come over here. Push down. Hold firm pressure for a second. Take it off. Top of the fat fork mold. Move over to the swim shad mold. Push down firm pressure. Fill it up. Top off that mold. And then they're going to draw down a little bit. You want to make sure you have plastic to add back to the top of your mold. That's going to make sure that when that plastisol draws down into the mold, that you don't end up with any air pockets or denting. Once that's done, all you do, twist this wing nut, pull this off, and your colors can go back in to your measuring cup. Just like so. Honestly, while we wait, this is probably my favorite part when I take apart my blending block because you get a good idea of what your baits are going to look like. Not a perfect idea, but a decent enough idea. Taking that blending block apart, you can see there's your top red, which I was afraid that there was going to be too much black. That kind of looks perfect. And then that orange with that gold hollow looks so good. It's actually a little bit more translucent than I expected that orange to be. But I think it allows that hollow flash to actually have more give than if that were a super, super thick orange base like on the original ones that I had done. Okay, moment of truth. So as we go to open this up, one thing I do know for sure, we're going to open up the swim shad first because I know when I was shooting this bait, my injector was a little bit off. So I don't expect these to be perfect dual injection or laminate baits. I think they're going to have a little bit of a twist, but we shall see. This one looks good. Look at how good that one turned out. Your orange is that sort of translucent color. Your red is really kind of dark with a lot of black in it. It looks really good. Pretty much all of them, but the bottom one turned out good. The bottom one, this is why you make custom baits. You have a little bit something different. It's not a perfect laminate. One side is a little bit higher. The other is a little bit lower, more red. Um, but two out of three are pretty much perfect. Now with this fat fork, this is a mold I've really, really liked since pretty much I've seen it. And I've been able to talk to Brennan and, and Drake about it. This is a bait that I've obviously not fished yet, but I'm excited to get on the water with. Unfortunately, these laminates don't seem to have come out as good as the swim shad, which is a little bit shocking. Um, the top one did. The top one came out pretty close to perfect with your solid red back with the black flake a little bit of bleed over into the orange and then the bottom one similar to that swim shad came out with a little bit more red than it did orange i'm thinking my colors weren't perfectly at the same temperature or weren't close enough at the same temperature so the red overtook the orange but really not a bad first run uh, the swim shads look pretty good the fat forks look pretty decent but hopefully we'll improve as we start to shoot some more baits through these molds. So I want to check temperature on these ones. When you're reheating, you don't have to get it back up to that 350 necessarily, as long as it's still molten. Um, and you really want both of them around that same temperature. So this one we're right about 335 degrees on the orange. Yeah, the red's a little bit more runny. I'm not sure why that is. It might be because of the amount of flake or the amount of pigment that I used. Yeah, like this one's... I don't know, within 10 degrees. So it should shoot pretty much the same, um, but you definitely want them as close as you can possibly get them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour the orange in first, give this maybe a chance to hold temp a little bit better, and then we'll pour the red in, which is gonna have sat out while I'm pouring this in. Red's over here, so that's my top color. 
push down, push down, hold. We're gonna fill off the tops of both of these cavities. Okay, moment of truth on the second pour. You know, this time we're gonna open up the fat fry or fat fork first. We opened a second last time and our shoots didn't come out quite as perfect as we would have liked. So we're gonna reverse and hopefully get a better result. And I think we have. Yeah, that's what you expect. A lot better dual injection where you have pretty much a straight line down the middle. You're gonna expect a little bit of bleed over, especially as it pushes down towards the tapered end of the bait. But I think that looks really good. I like the red tail. I really like how the red carried further into the bait. That's gonna have more contrast. That is a lot better pour. Just like the fat fork, this pour seems to have come out much, much more consistently. You still have a little bit more red bleeding through, but I think with these thinner, narrower baits, you're gonna have a little bit more of that. You still have a pretty decent laminate on both sides of the bait, um, and it looks really good. Both of these baits I'm super happy with. We're gonna try to get one or two more pours out. I think if I were more conservative with plastic, if I was being a little bit more careful, I'd be able to get you know two or three more for sure shoots out of both molds. Um, but we're just going to have some fun and see how many we can't get. But this second run looks far, far better than that first. So what we ended up with was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of your swim shads. And I believe eight of these fat forks. One, two, three, four five, six, number seven, and number eight. Now, if you were a lot more conservative on plastic, I probably could have got some more out of what I have here. Eight fat forks, nine swim shads. You probably could have got two to three more pours, and that's what we ended up with, a pile of baits, and that took me all of about 20 minutes to do. So there you have it, two Firecraw bladed jig trailers. Here's your three and a half inch swim shad, red and orange. 5 inch fat fork red and orange perfect colors for that springtime these are both baits that are going to catch fish on the back of bladed jig i'm super interested to see what you guys can come up with now this is my variation on a fire cross style color but if you guys have modifications that you like tag me in your photos and show me what you guys make for your bladed jigs this spring i'm definitely going to be making both of these baits in different colors in future videos, some more natural style colors, some perch style colors, shad imitations, because a bladed jig works all year, not just for largemouth, but also for smallmouth bass. So if I can make some colors that are more bait fish oriented, clean water, I think they're going to crush some big smallmouth bass. If you guys have any questions or comments, want to know any of the components that I used in today's video, whether it's the mold, the colorants, whatever it might be, it's all going to be linked down in the description below for you guys so you guys have everything you need. But as always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up down in the comment section down below, and I'll catch you guys next time.